Marine animals are sometimes exquisitely unique for us land creatures. Not only they themselves are unique, the name given to them are sometimes peculiar, like the headless chicken monster, gummy squirrel, leaf sheep, Spanish dancer, etc. And so is Gorgon Head. So, let me brought up the question. What exactly is Gorgon Head? The name Gorgon Head usually refers to the genus Gorgonocephalus, which literally means Gorgon Head. Depends on the context, it can also refer to the entire family, Gorgonocephalidae, which means the same thing basically. The first described Gorgon Head is Gorgonocephalus caput medusae, which means Gorgon Head, Medusa Head. If it's not obvious enough, it's because they look like the tangled snake hair of the Gorgons. It's part of the Ophiuroidea class, which are the brittle stars. If you aren't aware of these animals, basically it's like starfish but with long tentacular arms. This class is divided into two major orders, Ordo Ophiurida and Ordo Eurialida. Gorgon head is classified in the Eurialida order. By the way, just in case you didn't know, Eurialida is taken from Euriali. I think it's usually pronounced Euriali in English. Euriali is one of the three Gorgon sisters, Steno, Medusa, and Euriali. That's Greek mythology. Another biology fun fact, some biological terms uses the Steno and Euri prefix, which respectively means narrow and white. That's probably why the Gorgon sisters in God of War is depicted with three different body shapes. You know, narrow, medium, and white. Anyway, there is literally a genus of basket star called Euryali, which is in a different family called Eurialidae. So technically, it's not Gorgon head, even though it looks very similar. These two are sister taxa though, so it's very closely related. I'll talk about the morphological difference in the morphology section. The Eurialida order consists of two different kinds of animals. The one with branched arms are called basket stars, while the one with really long but not branching arms are called serpent stars or snake stars. Even within the Gorgonocephalidae and Eurialidae family, not all of them are basket stars, so you couldn't generalize them like that. Even among the basket stars, members can have different kind of forms. Astroboa nuda looks kinda neat, while Gorgonocephalus looks more tangled. They are widely distributed, but they tend to live in the deep sea so most people wouldn't have the chance to see them in the wild. As I've stated before, they are members of the Ophiroidea class. That means they still have a central disc with pentaradial symmetry. It's especially apparent if you look at the central part. The order's characteristic is their arm spines are located on the ventral sides only, no ornamentation on the lateral arm plates, and especially vertebrae with hourglass-shaped articulations that enable them to move their arm upwards. The Gorgonocephalidae family have hook-like spines on their arms. Meanwhile, the Eurialidae family don't have those. Gorgonocephalus have convex body with thick dichotomic arms. Each branch is thinner and even more branches exist towards the tip of their arms. They can have up to 5,000 arm tips. The size and shape of their hooks and spines also varies between regions of their arms. The arm spines extend into the oral disc. They have a mouth in their ventral side with multiple irregular columns of teeth. Oh, by the way, they can grow up to 10 cm disc diameter wise, but with arms extended, they can reach 80 cm diameter. So what's with the branching arms? What lifestyle do they have that drives them into such form? Let's talk about their lifestyle, but before that… They mostly feed on planktons, but can feed on small pelagic creatures like brine shrimps. When in feeding position, they grab the substrate with some of their arms, then extend the other arms. When prey touches their arm, they will wrap their prey with that arm and then roll that arm towards their mouth. 
If the prey is quite big, they will wrap it with multiple arms until the prey is completely tangled. So yeah, they are basically suspension feeder and their branching arms help them do that. They are oviparous and reproduce sexually. Hatchling can be as small as 0.4 millimeters in diameter. When they are young, they are often found within Gersemia colony. To be precise, inside its polyp. Gersemia is a sponge, by the way. When they are young, they haven't got branching arms yet. Unfortunately, I cannot find any image of their young, so just imagine this without a branch, and shorter arms, and smaller size of course. After several days, they emerge from the polyp but still stay on the Gersemia. Young Gorgon Head may eat the triders stuck on Gersemia, perhaps even take food from inside the polyp since they were observed to stick an arm inside Gersemia's polyp. Most of them had already left from the Gersemia at around half centimeter diameter size, but most still live on adult Gorgon Head. Yes, I mean on top of the adult, like being carried around by the adult. One adult is observed to carry as much as 20 young individuals, but usually it's not more than 5. After reaching 2 cm in diameter, they start to catch planktons by themselves. They had mostly left the adult and live independently by 4.5 cm in diameter. That's also when they started to get more branches on their arms. Each of their arms is sensitive. They can react independently when exposed to stimuli. When an arm is exposed to physical touch, they will move that specific arm. Same with if multiple arms adjacent to each other are touched. When they are touched from two different directions, and especially when they are touched on the disc, they will curl their arms together to cover the disc. That's why most specimens collected have their arms crumpled together and they form a somewhat ball-like overall shape. When you think about it, their branching arms is an evolutionary mystery because, like I said, not all members of their family have branching arms, and some species in the Eurialidae family also have similar body form. Molecular clocking and fossil records indicate the Eurialida order diverged in Cretaceous. A publication in 2018 shows two fossils. One is Aspiduriella from the Triassic and Melusinaster from the Jurassic. These two show the transition from the typical ophiorid morphology to the urealid morphology. These are mostly based on the arms. Even so, those two are still mostly similar to the ophiorid overall morphology-wise. I don't think we have a fossil on any basket star that clearly shows branching arms yet. I might be completely wrong though. Do let me know if we did find some. All in all, they are still interesting animals, and there are currently some researchers focusing on them. So perhaps we'll see another new discovery in a relatively near future. Who knows what we'll find out next. Maybe another clade of unrelated basket stars. Maybe fossil records. But for now, let's just learn what is known. And that's all for now. Oh, by the way, Gorgon Head is still available on display in Monterey Bay Aquarium, I believe. They could also be found in some shallow water, so there's a lot of chance to see them. Anyway, enjoy your day.